Uh, hello. Uh, it's like home being here because, as, as it has been previously said, uh, Open Cosmos was part of Open Entrepreneur First. So I'm not just me that I've led from those cultures a few times <laughs> yeah, at the start of the entrepreneurial journey. So, so yeah, it's good to be here. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Rafael. Uh, I'm from Open Cosmos, and uh, we provide simple and affordable space access using nano satellites. Now, what is a nanosatellite? This is our nanosatellite. It's called QB. We brought it from design to delivery in four months. Uh, it's going to be launched in the following weeks on the following Paris launch. So this is an extremely exciting time for all of us. And we are looking forward to putting this technology into your hands to see what you could develop. Uh, now, I would like to start asking who in this room thinks that space is hard, space is techy, Maybe something difficult. Could you raise your hand? Okay, so the only goal that I have during the following speech is to prove you all wrong. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you why, okay? I, although probably you thought that it's, it's difficult because of these three reasons. First is the technology, to say that's something really hard. Then there is all the paperwork and bureaucracy involved in the space sectors. And last but not least, there is the cost, right? Everyone knows that space is something expensive. Now I'll go in each one of these barriers and explain how Open Cosmos is trying to minimize the pain that is currently being faced by anyone uh, trying to develop space technology and space businesses. Technology. So traditionally, you are looking at big platforms like this. Satellites require expertise in order to work into vacuum conditions, outer space conditions. So yes, that's hard. <laughs> Then there's the testing facilities. You need to guarantee that whatever you are developing on the ground will work out there. That's not something easy either. Of course, launching is something hard, and all the ground infrastructure that you need in order to monitor and uh, control your satellites. So this is what's thought of uh, like the traditional space industry, and it takes cycles of around five to 10 years to get the mission out there. Now, uh, with Open Cosmos, we like to say that we try to simplify that with three steps. So step number one, it's you are the expertise. You know what you can do. You develop your tail, whether it's a camera, transceiver, a new sensor, whatever you want to develop. Then there is the second step that will look like a joke for you. So magic happens, right? And then there is the third step that is what you eventually want to see, which is the data on your desk, on your computer, to spoil the commercial and bring all those uses that you foresee for that, right? Now, since we are among friends and family, I, I will tell you a little bit about that magic. And, and that magic is called the uh, Open Cosmos. Uh, what we do is, before, even before you develop your payload, we hand you a development kit with software that enables you to test your technology in a standardized platform that is fully compatible with the satellite you will have seen before, our nano satellite. Okay? So once you're ready, and this can take you the time that you feel convenient, you ship it back to us, we assemble it and test it in our small nano satellite, and launch it into orbit together with other customers. This is, is mass customization and it allows us to operate many of these satellites at the same time, eventually providing exactly what you want, which is the data, right? And we support you with that data through our cloud-based software that enables you also to interact with the payload that's right? out there. So it's an end-to-end an -end solution where Open Cosmos is with you from the beginning until the beginning of your satellite. And yes, that's hard, but we take care of that, so it will be easy for you. You step with the, with the top rope over there. Now, the second problem is a bit more difficult for us, and that's the paperwork, the second barrier, right? The bureaucracy. And, and it's harder for, for many reasons, but the first one is, is the legal, the law. As we were saying, the law in space is in the making. We don't have a lot of influence on in it, and, and we see how it's being generated as we speak. So this is something that is a challenge. Then there is the frequency allocation. You don't even want to look into this <laughs> image. Uh, uh, the, the frequency spectrum is, is scarce. It's something that we have to coordinate and take very good care of. 
Uh, and this obviously, in this world, still involves a lot of paperwork and bureaucracy that we need to take care of. Insurance. So if it's hard to get an insurance for your car, you have a magic four satellite, right? Uh, it, it's not something you want to do on your own. You want to group with other people in order to be able to have a say and to have those papers run smoothly. <coughs> Last but not least, there is export control. Space technology is something that is quite strategic for many, for many nations, and dealing with all these regulations is something that takes a lot of the time. So of those five pages that I was saying before, it takes usually a project to come into life in the space sector. This takes most of the time. In some cases, even more than the development of the technology itself. Now you're going to say, okay, you're a small startup. How are you going to face all this? Um, well, we can do one thing that we are already doing, thanks to Catapult and other institutions in the UK, I must say that we are doing effectively, which is give active feedback to the people that eventually will lead to those decisions. And there are key institutions such as the European Space Agency, the UK Space Agency, that have a say in these regulations. The opinion is valuable, and, and, and we are trying to at least make them understand the needs of the emerging space uh, way that, that, it, that is coming. But that's not where we are putting, putting our focus as a company. We are focusing mainly on creating key partnerships with large suppliers, ground second suppliers, and of course law firms to guarantee that all the processes that involve them, all the paperwork required for you to launch your satellites, is streamlined. And why we are the best in order to do this? Well, because we will be doing this for many of you. If you are trying to do it only for yourself, you have to guarantee that your platform, whatever you are developing, is over there. We have a standardized platform. We know we can take out. We have this partnership with these players. So once we have done it once, it's a lot easier to find insurance for the second one, and the third one, and the fifth one. All right? So this is how we play this game. Now, the third barrier that you are all aware of, and I was mentioning before, is the cost. Uh, space technology and satellites are known to cost millions. Huge satellites cost hundreds of millions, small satellites cost several millions. In our case, we also do some magic here, and instead of costing millions, it costs hundreds of thousands. Now you are going to get septic, like all the investors, you know, that have some investors in the room. So, wh what's the magic? Where does it come from? <coughs> First thing we do is mass customization. So again, we have a platform that we can configure with different configurations to satisfy a broader spectrum of customers. So this not only reduces the, the production cost, but it also reduces the launching cost, because we are launching many of them at the same time. The operational cost, because we are operating many of the satellites. And then you see how the economies of scale start to work in this industry, even with initial small numbers. Second piece of magic is the disruptive technologies. And this is not our technology. These are the disruptive technologies that you see around in the current environment. You see launching systems that are reusable. Now, this is changing the economies of transportation in the world. And I'm seeing transportation, well, just a few months ago, before uh, SpaceX did it, uh, the, the, the landing of, of the first stage rocket, it was just launching. Now it's now transportation. And this changed everything. And the third thing that minimizes the overall cost is the optimization of processes. As it, it, it might have been like really fast, but I explained what is the development kit before. Now that development kit allows these processes to be a lot smoother. You don't have to go to your constructor and iterate whatever payload you are developing back and forward, which is what I was seeing at their bar and many other of my my colleagues were seeing in our own, in, in our previous jobs. You, you work on your technology on your own, following a standard, and then everything is streamlined from there. It's much easier. So, there is one key thing here, that everything you need today, in order to put your own asset, your own technology out there, is in this room. You don't have to look around anymore. You have Catapult that will help you build your own business model, targeting the key threads uh, of, of information, of applications that, that you should focus on based on your technology. You have Entrepreneur First, 
this room that will help you and guide you through the first steps of your entrepreneurial life. And I can tell you that it's really helpful to have that, that kind of help. You have open customers that often will help you with, with all the technology, everything you require, and the services around that nano satellite so you can put your, your better job there in an easy way. You have Seraphim that will give you some, some investment and some money to fly your payloads in our satellites. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be great. And then obviously you have the front space that will help you leverage all that and show how important your technology and your business is. So everything you need is in here. I won't even talk about the applications because uh, Connor has been talking about them already, but there are many. There are oil and gas applications, earth observation, remote sensing, agriculture, so, so many. Just think about your technology and try to see a disruptive way of using it in space. Now, being an entrepreneur, first I have to ask this question. How many people in this room are somehow involved in computer science, machine learning, or AI? Could you please raise your hand? OK, OK, well, that's great. Now let me explain to you how I see the sector today and compare it with what's happening in yours, right? Computers, from my understanding, are like graves. You have information, you present that information, and you have an output of that information. That's where we have seen the most of the evolution uh, in, the, in the computer industry, right? Before they were huge, like this room, then they were miniaturized, now we are all using and we have them in our pockets. Correct? Now, I want to tell you that for me, space technology are the sensors. sensors. So, if you put a satellite out there, what you are doing, is, for instance, if it has a camera, it's, it's optical imaging. You are gathering information around the world, optical information, that then those computers can process and generate new information out of it. If you have a transceiver, a telecommunication transceiver, you have ears to listen and to communicate among people, right? You can also talk. So, and we will find other senses, other ways of using this technology, whether it is microgravity to develop new materials. Just, just name it, just think about it. So there's a huge opportunity here. It's no longer about developing more powerful brains. I think it's the moment to develop meaningful and powerful sensors that can gather the information that the brain requires in order to produce better businesses, better research, and better information. So I couldn't live without telling you a little bit about how our products can help you uh, get into space. If you have kids, QBCAN is, is a great choice. Uh, the European Space Agency has already delivered hundreds of them to students all over Europe. What it enables, it's, it's a kind of idea, I think that we have a few there, uh, we can show them around later, where you basically can put your payload, test it, and launch it in a sounding rocket a few kilometers high or a few meters high, and, and test your initial steps in the space, all right? And if, if you are more of, of an entrepreneur, if you want to start developing your own payload, or just start playing with technology, get cubic. The educational one is extremely affordable, and will allow you to start building those technology in a way that is compatible with the satellite. And of course, if you have an application that is already meaningful, whether it is for business or research, and that you would like to put out there in orbit, come to us. We would love to have our cubing uh, enabling that and making that possible. So I think that some of the team of Open Cosmos are around here. You can raise your hand. Uh, if you have any more questions or things that you would like to know about what we do or about the problem, just, just let us know. This is about opening the, the cosmos to you, making this technology available in your hands. So, pop it out later.